very narrow aisle, BNA lift trucks are designed for indoor use and are ideally suited for applications such as large distribution centers and high density stacking and storing. Before you operate your VNA truck, familiarize yourself with the operator's manual located in the left-hand side of the operator compartment just above the operator seat. The operating manual describes the operation and basic maintenance of the Heister VNA lift truck. The lift truck nameplate is located inside the operator compartment above the operator seat on the right-hand side. The capacity, specified in kilograms or pounds, is listed in terms of weight and load center, specified in millimeters or inches. The capacity is the maximum load the lift truck can handle for the load condition shown on the nameplate. If the lift truck has special load handling equipment, the rating will be shown on the nameplate. A low 16.7 inch step height allows the operator to access the operator compartment. The operator compartment is designed for a forward stance operating position, turret forks first. The cushioned seat has a gas assist cylinder with six inches of travel height. Once inside the operator compartment, lower the retractable side gates. If the side gates are not lowered, the truck will not function. Fit yourself with the full body harness and confirm the tether or lanyard is securely fastened to the anchor bar located on the overhead guard inside the operator compartment. Fasten the opposite end of the lanyard or tether to the body harness. The seat is adaptable for seated or standing operation. For standing operation, lift the seat bottom to a vertical position and then adjust the seat arms to a comfortable height and position. To adjust the height of the operator's seat, pull up on the lever below the seat. Release the lever to lock the seat in the desired position. To rotate the seat, pull out the lever located under the front of the seat. The seat can be locked in the straight ahead position, plus or minus 10 degrees or plus or minus 20 degrees to either the left or the right. Push the lever in to lock the seat's position. The key switch has two positions. Turning the key to the on position activates electrical power to the lift truck circuits and illuminates the dash display. Turning the key to the off position disconnects all electrical power from the lift truck circuits. The emergency power disconnect button is used to quickly disconnect battery power from the lift truck. On the seat mounted controls, the emergency power disconnect switch is located on the right hand joystick assembly. Push the button to disconnect all power circuits and disable all electrical controls. Turn the button clockwise one quarter turn to reset. An audible alarm will sound if the power disconnect has been enabled. For seat mounted controls, moving the right hand side joystick toward the forks will cause the lift truck to move in the direction of the forks. Moving the joystick towards the mast will cause the lift truck to move in the direction of the mast. Travel speed is proportional to the movement of the joystick. Moving the joystick to the full forward or full reverse position will provide maximum travel speed. Releasing the joystick to the neutral position will result in an automatic deceleration to a stop. If the joystick is left in the neutral position and the lift truck remains at a stop, the parking brake will be automatically engaged. The right and left operator presence sensors are located on the floor of the operator compartment. Depressing the right side sensor will enable the traction system and operator cab lifting and lowering functions. This sensor will also enable the turret attachment functions. It is not necessary to press both the left and right operator presence sensors when the lift truck is equipped with a front barrier. The main horn switch is located on the right-hand joystick. Rotate the switch up or down to sound the horn. The horn is enabled when the key is in the on position. The auxiliary horn switch is located on the left-hand joystick. Push the switch to sound the horn. The switch is enabled any time the battery is connected to the lift truck. Plugging is the primary method of braking for VNA trucks during normal operation. Plugging utilizes regenerative braking and occurs when the control handle is positioned in the opposite direction of travel. The amount of braking force applied is variable and proportional to the joystick position. This, too, is an adjustable parameter within the dash display, allowing the level of braking to be tailored to the customer's application. Neutral braking is also a form of regenerative braking, similar to plugging. Neutral braking is engaged by returning the travel control to the neutral position. Neutral braking uses a less aggressive level of regenerative braking to bring the truck to a stop. The regen level is an adjustable parameter within the dash display, allowing the level of aggressiveness to be tailored to the customer's application. The operator should always keep one hand on the traction controls and one hand on the steering handle or wheel. 
In an emergency, the unit can also be stopped by pressing down the quick power disconnect switch. This immediately activates a mechanical parking brake, bringing the unit to an abrupt stop. The quick power disconnect switch should only be used in emergency situations, as the braking level is aggressive and frequent use can damage the parking brake. VNA trucks can be equipped with or without a front barrier. If there is no front barrier, both operator presence sensors must be engaged to operate the truck, and if one foot leaves the operator presence sensor, the truck will stop abruptly. If there is a front barrier, the truck can be configured so only one foot is required on either of the sensors to continue operation. This allows the operator to move either foot around freely throughout the shift. If neither foot is on one of the sensors, the truck will abruptly stop. Rotate the gray paddle switch to the right to lift the cab. Rotate the paddle switch to the left to lower the cab. Lift and lower speed is proportional to the movement of the switch. Moving the paddle to the full lift or full lower position will provide maximum lift or lower speed. Pressing the slow mode selector button will reduce hydraulic and traction functions to 50% of maximum performance. Press the slow mode selector again to return to normal operation. Pressing the auxiliary horn switch will sound the horn. Rotate the paddle switch to the left to lift the forks on the auxiliary mast. Rotate the gray paddle switch to the right to lower the forks on the auxiliary mast. Fork lift and lower speed is proportional to the movement of the switch. Moving the paddle to the full lift or full lower position will provide maximum lift or lower speed. Rotate the rocker switch underneath the handle downward to rotate the forks to the left. Rotate the rocker switch upward to rotate the forks to the right. Rotation speed is proportional to the movement of the switch. Moving the paddle to the full up or down position will provide maximum rotation speed. Press the yellow switch to enable the load weight function. Engage and lift the load clear of the floor or racking. Press the load weight switch to display the load weight on the dash display for 5 seconds. After 5 seconds, the load weight function is disabled. Press the red fork positioning switch and operate the left joystick to traverse and rotate the forks to the centered forks forward position. The motion will stop automatically when the forks reach the centered position. If the joystick is not moved within 3 seconds of activating the centering switch, the action will be cancelled. Pressing the green synchronizing switch and operating the left joystick will move the forks in a synchronized movement from one home position to the opposite home position. A home position is defined as having the forks fully rotated and fully traversed to the left or right with the load within the profile of the truck. This command may also be used to bring the forks to either home position from the fork centered position. Press the green on switch to enable the lift truck wire guidance system. Press the red off switch to disable the wire guidance system. VNA trucks are equipped with an auxiliary mini mast. VNA trucks can be equipped with the shuttle table attachment. The following refers to trucks equipped with forward mounted controls. The return to center steering handle is located to the left hand side of the multifunction display panel. The handle moves 60 degrees to the left or right of center. When traveling in the fork's first direction, moving the handle clockwise will cause the lift truck to steer to the right. Moving the handle counterclockwise will cause the lift truck to steer to the left. When the handle is released, it will automatically return to neutral and the lift truck will move in a straight line. Drive wheel movement is proportional to the movement of the steering wheel handle. Moving the handle full left or full right will cause the drive tire to turn 90 degrees to the left or right. The following refers to trucks equipped with seat side mounted controls. The multi-turn steering wheel is located to the left hand side of the left joystick when the lift truck is equipped with optional multi-turn steering. When traveling in the fork's first direction, moving the steering wheel clockwise will cause the lift truck to steer to the right. Moving the handle counterclockwise will cause the lift truck to steer to the left. The steering wheel can continue to be rotated once the drive tire has reached the steering stop at 90 degrees either side of the straight ahead position. This option does not self-center. 
VNA trucks will be equipped with either a 48 volt or 72 volt electrical system. To charge the truck, first make sure the key switch is in the off position. Open the battery compartment lid and disconnect the battery from the truck electrical system by pulling out the battery connector. Plug the battery connector into the mating battery connector of the battery charger. Charge the batteries only in the designated area. When charging the batteries, keep the vent caps clean. The battery charger area must have ventilation so explosive fumes are removed. An overhead guard is a welded structure and part of the operator compartment module to protect the operator from falling objects. The overhead guard offers reasonable protection to operators from falling objects, but cannot protect against all possible impacts. Therefore, it must not be considered a substitute for good judgment and care when handling loads. An energy-absorbing or retractable lanyard and full-body harness is required by OSHA and by Heister to operate a rising or lifting platform-equipped lift truck. An optional front barrier can be used to aid in operator protection. This product orientation video only covers the standard B463-B464 series, V30ZMU, V35ZMU. If your truck is equipped with any options, please contact your Heister dealer for more information.